Welcome to the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. You will all know the terror of Flutter Biznatch. Oh, no. That's kind of hot, actually. <laughs> oh, oh, Norman, you got a thing for the bad girls. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, she goes hot, y'all. <laughs> well, now, I'm developing all new kinds of slash fic ideas. Yay. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. You are unbanned from the hand from Free Ham Day. Um, unbanned I'm trying from the to be hand nice. Of free Ham Day? What? No, you're unbanned from Free Ham Sandwich Day. Um, who? Me or Silver? Both. <laughs> That's the nicest thing I could think of. Technically, I don't. I wanted somebody to say something nice to me, and that's what I wanted them to say. Oh, that's that's nice. Anyways, um, okay. uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, very confusing much. Uh, but anywho, in today's... some some people should get it if they have played a certain game. Uh, oh, you're talking about? Oh, no, I don't know. But anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review season eight, episode thirteen, the mean six. In this episode, Queen Chrysalis returns to exact her revenge on Starlight Glimmer and the main six. <laughs> so anyway, before we start, let's get into the, well, first impressions. Silver, what did you think? I liked seeing the return of basically the discorded main six. That's what this really was. But it's not a standout episode for me because it's basically just watching the two parties play off one another with no real climax. And there's something of a bitter after feeling, especially for Fluttershy, uh, who has been maligned with the animals of the forest. Granted, it's the Everfree Forest, so uh, I don't know how bad that really is. Oh no, the place where animals kill everybody doesn't like me anymore. Is it nature fascinating? All in all, it does raise the question of whether or not Chrysalis is a genuine threat anymore. I don't know. I mean, Chrysalis' plan here, okay, she's menacing, she's really uh, uh, danger and whatnot. But in the end, she's just... Um, how do I put this? Desperate. No, as threatening as burnt toast. Oh, no. <laughs> she's also quite loopy. Desperate. But anyway, Sammy, what do you think? Crystals was adorable in this episode. Both in a, ha ha, I'm going to rule the world. Like, and you know they're not because, you know... They're they're kind of useless and irrelevant at this point, but at the same time, she's being so cute about it. Like, oh my goodness, that little dance, like while she's uh proclaiming how her evil plan is going to work and whatnot, while she's stuck in the forest alone. Oh my goodness, Chrissy, oh, Chrissy, yeah. oof. So yes, I know, I know. Just charge me. Just charge me. <laughs> she's just so cute. I love her. <laughs> like I went to hug her. Like uh. overall, it's good episode. <laughs> I I like how the um, what's it? I'm trying to think the uh, Discord uh themed main six, main six mm. comes back. Like you know how know. like a uh, return to harmony mm-hmm. was right. Yeah, yeah. I I kind of miss those characters. <laughs> it's all good. And I'm happy. I'm a happy happy Safi. <laughs> All right. So, anywho, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun, especially when I watched the leaked version of this one, where sound effects are not there, and just watching Chrysalis come back, like, oh wow, she's back! She's going to wreak havoc! Like, ooh, what what dastardly plan is she going to do? And is she going to be the main villain for the season? Answer: Nothing much, and no disappointment. But hey, at least we got an episode with the quote unquote mean six back. And in all honesty, um, this version of the Mean Six is much better. Uh, they're more well-rounded and more flushed out. So like that. It helps that they have Evil Twilight at the forefront. Yeah, Evil Twilight's good. By the way, um, I hey hey, did anybody see like the uh the leaked version and how like the animation for uh the ending went oh, oh, compared yes. to how it ended up? Yeah. I, oh yes, I we'll we'll saying. get to that. Oh yeah. yeah. Oof. Yeah. I Wait, okay. That wasn't quite. No, enough. that was not. That was not the F at the end. That was yeah. just ooh. Yeah, I, I I had it before, and um, <laughs> fun fact, my hard disk kind of died on me, and the big thing was in that 
hard disk and <laughs> yeah, I don't have access to it anymore. So uh, I think I saw a toned down version of it. Yeah. But anywho, uh, so if you guys have not seen this episode yet, what are you doing? It's been a while since we've done any episode reviews. So go, 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 go watch it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode. So let's get into it. We start off with our main six being impatient and complaining about photographers. I know how you feel, Twilight. I'm one of them. I'm sorry. Sorry, for a minute there, I thought you said Flutter gol- golfers, at which point I thought, wh- where did Fluttershy get a caddy? <laughs> I don't know. Was no, it that bad? Photographers. <laughs> Was yeah. it that bad? Seriously? No, it's just it's just my ears playing tricks on me. All right, then. It could be my voice. But anywho, let me take this gob of water first. Oh, a gob. Mm, sorry. <clears throat> but anywho... So, the photographer Kim in, she's a new character, she says she's sorry and whatnot, and uh, starts to take pictures and also making them look good. Um, shooting out their hair and stuff, and also, um, you know, just doing the cool thing that the ponies does and whatnot, and taking pictures and whatnot. And also, Pinkie Pie just says, uh, you forget somebody, and that somebody is Glim Glam. You should take a picture of her, so yeah. And this photographer is like any photographer... Uh, I'm not paid enough for this stuff, so I'm just going to do my job and get out of here. After I photograph Rainbow Dash's booty. Yeah, the booty, 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 booty. She's in it for the plot. Uh, Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah. Oh, wow. I hate you both right now. (laughs) I'm sorry. That was bad, and I love puns. Oh, so you're feeling bummed out? (laughs) I hate you. (laughs) so much but 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 <laughs> i know that was not creative of me i don't i don't really care <laughs> so, i like big plots and cannot lie you other brothers can't deny uh, okay anyway let's carry on before we kill sappy <laughs> <laughs> oh come on i've almost got her to conniption status <laughs> yeah so any we'll, we'll try hard later on so I, I know we can so anywho, once that's done, we get to see uh, this photographer go to the Everfree Forest or something like that and reveal her dastardly plans. And oh my gosh, it's uh, Queen Chrysalis. Oh no. Although have you noticed that the School of Friendship is just a stone's throw away from this dark looking forest? Ain't that uh, the usual when it comes to School of Friendship and whatnot? Remember Hogwarts? Well, Hog- Hogwarts is insane, even oh. on a good day. Yeah, so he's all good. And it's all thanks to those three Gryffindor children. <laughs> Anyways. I'll get your children and your little Gryffindor, too. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be your little owl and your little rat and your little cat? Well, I'd I'd love to get the rat, <laughs> then kill it. Yeah. But no, oh, no, there's the spoilers, no. <laughs> but anywho, uh, we oh spoilers for what? <laughs> at this point, everybody knows. Yeah, true. That. But anywho, as we go on, we get to see Queen Chrysalis exit her plan, and she has a spell that create duplicates of the main six. But she doesn't really say what kind of duplicates are they, and it seems that the duplicates are cheap China knockoffs. Yeah, and one of them has a melting problem. Yeah, yeah. So Queen Chrysalis does her plan, does her magic, and creates the mean six. Ooh, they're very mean. How no? I know. How dare? I know. So anywho, Twilight and her friends start their uh, what you might call this camping trip, and they decide to have a get together, a what you might call this friendship retreat. Yay! Yay! More lame friendship stuff. When Chrysalis is around, the ponies often are in retreat. So, anywho, uh, we we get a few banters from our main six, and including Glim Glam, and it's been known to Applejack that this is Glim Glam's first camping trip, and uh, Applejack wants to do Glim Glam here a solid by making this first camping trip her best and make her enjoy it and whatnot. And yeah... Hijinks ensue. I'm with Glim Glam here. I don't like the outdoors. Yep, outdoors are no fun. There's no internet, there's no electricity, and that's that big ball there's of... There's bugs everywhere, there's no hot tea. Yeah, the big ball of fire is annoying. I hate big bugs and I cannot lie. You others can't deny. 
Uh, but well, talking about big bugs, right? Uh, the next scene we get to see Queen Chrysalis exacting her plans, and you know what? I'm so confused with this one. What? Why are the what you call this mean six discorded mean six? Like, eh, kind of makes sense, I guess. Well, there's a, there's several ideas come to mind. It's never overtly stated. But one, Chrysalis herself is not exactly an emotionally healthy being. True. So, so she's in some ways created the inverse. They've picked up her negativity. Or she did the spell wrong, as this is something she doesn't normally do. Or if it's in the Everfree Forest, which has never had the most pleasant, is it possible the trees they, she used to birth these characters uh, were in some way corrupt as well? A lot of questions being reason here, but in, in the end, we, we'll find out later. But anywho, um, we, we get to see, well, quote-unquote, the discorded mean six, and they're kind of a bit well flushed out here, more or less. And we, we get to see Queen Christus says, okay, uh, we need to scatter around to look for the elements of harmony so I can conquer the world, of course. And uh, with the mean six being who they are, uh, they're, they're not going to get anything done at all. And, well, it looks like Twilight Sparkle here has, quote-unquote, the plan or wants to take over the world, too. And she's willing to help Queen Christus because she has ambition. Yay. You're going to get far with that ambition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's also smarter than this chrysalis because she points out, and I feel like she's channeling a YouTuber here, you were close enough to attack them and take hairs from their manes. Why didn't you just take your revenge then? That is true. But technically, that's a bad idea. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> you you don't have any escape plan. You have no backup plan. You're once you started the attack, like everybody's gonna pounce on you. There, there's no escape plan for that. Even so, Twilight is pointing out what we're all thinking and pointing out that uh, Chrysalis, she loves to monologue, but she's not as brave as she likes to put forth. True that. True that. And by the way, I love Terra in this one. Uh, <laughs> she's really playing it out here because that that mom though. Hmm? Like, oh. It's like that moment where you say, like, Tara in this episode, like, oh, it's like, oh, God, Norman, no. I didn't even not notice. On, not on recording. I didn't even notice I did that. <laughs> <laughs> you did. But anywho, um, Tara was really evil in this one and channeling evil Twilight. Like, I like that. I really like that. It shows range. That's good. So, anywho, we go... You know what? I'm going to try and speed things up here because this ping-pong match is going to get a little boring. So, anywho, as I speed things up, we get to see the main six going to the campsite, which is in the Everfree Forest near the ravine near the castle of the two sisters. So, that's where they're going. And in between, uh, they get separated, starting with the Shy by helping out Ebert, who fell down a tree and couldn't fly back and Pinkie Pie being Pinkie Pie and so on by racing up ahead to, well, from the crew. There's this saying, never split up the party and nobody really listens. And we get back to the main six and they get separated too, trying to find the location of the uh, elements of harmony. And guess what? Pinkie Pie meets up with Mean Twilight and somehow Pinkie Pie got tricked into revealing where is the tree and Fluttershy got lost after helping the birds and you know what it's a whole mess everybody got split up and misunderstanding happens so I'm gonna open the floor to parts of this mix-up happening and what do you guys think well let's start with Starlight Glim Glam because this is an episode that gets to show her being very vulnerable She's out of her element, pun intended. Uh, she isn't doing well with camping. She's the target of Chrysalis's rage, but that's not going to be really a factor. It's just nice to see that in a lot of stories, they try to make, make her a big part of it by giving her the one insight that everyone else misses or being really so good at magic that she can solve things pretty much on her own. She is just as much along for the this bumpy, unpleasant ride as the others. And that makes her more a part of the group than if she said, hey, wait a minute, is it possible that there could be copies or duplicates of us running around? 
you know, she doesn't see through the ploy as she might in other stories. So I, I greatly enjoyed that aspect. I don't know. I mean, when I when I saw this episode, the misunderstanding thing, like the first one that came to mind was kind of raising the what you call this flag, was with Rainbow Dash and Applejack looking at reverse rarity. Like, wouldn't they notice that and kind of call out on it and discuss like, hey, something's wrong with rarity. I think we should be very very wary of her. Well, maybe she just has an off day. I don't know, but I want it. Yeah. But, Silver, do you mind me uh, speeding things up, or do you want to go, uh, do you want to point out some other things? Right now, I'm full speed ahead. want to talk about the reconciliation at the end. All right. That's all. So, anywho, I have to point this out. While Twilight is trying to look for everyone, she comes across Pinkie Pie, and Pinkie Pie seems very bored of this whole uh, thing. And this is discorded Pinkie Pie, and that hurt Twilight's feeling. And Rainbow Dash flies along, and she flags her down, but Rainbow Dash being the discorded Rainbow Dash says, I don't really care, this is boring, and I this is not cool and boring and whatnot, blah blah blah. And yeah, that, that pushes Twilight to the edge, and she is, well, hurt. Somehow everybody gathers to each other, and the mean six, including Chrysalis, heads to the location of the Tree of Harmony, while the main six argue over each other because everybody got their feelings hurt. Oh, misunderstanding and whatnot. I will say, I think one of the biggest things working against this uh, episode is the fact that no one sits down and explains what happened. Yeah, that was pretty frustrating. And here's the thing. Communication in My Little Pony has always been poor. Oddly, it's the children who are better at expressing themselves to their peers than the adults, which says something right there. I actually feel like that mirrors real life in an eerie sort of way. So the big thing that's undermining the main six here is that none of them sits down and says, look, here's what happened. Wait, that couldn't have happened. I was with so-and-so. No, you weren't. I wasn't with you, but I physically saw you. Well, I physically saw you. And then Starlight says, could there be copies in this forest? And then we're back to business as usual. So, yeah, give it take. I know, that that could have solved everything because the most obvious one, uh, the most obvious uh, quote-unquote plot hole or narrative device that they could use was with Rarity and uh, Starlight Glimmer because those two were inseparable for this entire episode. And Applejack and Rainbow Dash were together too. So, if they were just talk things out and spotted that kind of loophole, plot hole, or whatever it is, and, oh, la gas, something's at foot here. Was it this card? Oh, no. But nah, they didn't. They just argue and whatnot and hurt each other's feeling until Twilight couldn't handle it and just tells every pony to quiet down. And Twilight says, I'm sorry for this. I, I just want us to get together and be friends and if you guys don't want to hang out i understand and you guys can go home play your xboxes or playstation 4 or even your steam or even that newfangled device called the nintendo switch you, you guys can go play that if you want to i understand uh, if you want to switch switch things up yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so anywho um everybody says they're sorry to each other and I take that as a lesson that Thing happened, and we shouldn't let it get to us, and we're sorry, and hug it out. Yay. I don't know if it's ever that clean cut, uh, but I do like that none of the main six feels they have to win in this argument. They are they care more about each other than they do their own pride, even Rainbow Dash. Yeah, that's true, because Rainbow Dash just wants to hang out and have fun. Camping is her gig, or her thing. So, that's... That's a real compliment to their friendship and their characters. There is a lingering indignity that they've they've all been, well, maligned in one another's eyes, even though it wasn't really them, and they'll never know it. This is doubly true for Fluttershy, who is on the outs with all the animals of the forest, even the little birdie she helped. And it's going to take a while to... Well, it'd be funny if they, like, retrace their steps and one day, like... One little bird says, hey, she helped me, but she didn't help me. But I only met one of you. Yeah, and then, like, oh, look, gosh, something is a foot. Something is a hoof, and, and we uh, were way too late to find out because, oh, hey, 
What happened here at the Tree of Harmony? What are these colorful wooden planks? Yeah, yeah. and talking about the Tree of Harmony, uh, it seems that the evil six plus Queen Chrysalis are there, and they trash the campsite. Oh, they're they're evil. Ooh. And somehow, their evilness affected the Tree of Harmony? I don't know. I'm so confused with this one. Like, what's going on? Even watching the spoil leak version and also the official... Uh, I won't say official. Um, the official, yeah, the official release. I still don't get what's going on here because it seems that the Mean Six are trying to destroy the tree, and Queen Chrysalis is being backstabbed by Evil Twilight here. Magic battle suddenly. Oh no! Um, remember that one scene from the what you call this Evil Dead with the tree? Oh no! Oh wow! You're going there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a family movie. Look out for splinters. Oh, yeah. So, anywho, yeah, a tree kind of attacks them and uh, turns them into their original form, which is sticks. But while this is all happening, the tree or the elements on the tree turn black and whatnot. I don't understand what's going on. Do you have any theories on this, Silver? Offhand, I think the tree is sensing that something is wrong, that these are false ponies and basically perversions of what they're meant to represent so this is its way of saying perversions <laughs> no th- that's that's us when when chrysalis takes a shot of rainbow dash's booty yeah, yeah, yeah. booty 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 well that's you that's you and norman don't wrap me into this <laughs> oh you know you like it Safi. yeah we know you like big butts you don't know me i yes i do <laughs> you don't know me that well <laughs> let's ask manga comedy <laughs> Oh, wow. Anyway, so I think the tree is just sensing, hey, something's wrong here. And what I find interesting is that the clone Twilight is overpowering Chrysalis in terms of magic, which is, one, remember, this is Chrysalis, when she was empowered by Liv, could take down Celestia. Now she can't uh, tackle a clone Alicorn, which may or may not be as strong as the real Twilight. It also says something when, uh, when I've noticed that villains in stories often seem like more powerful because they've released any sense of restraint or limitation. They don't care if they hurt you. The protagonists often have to get over that feeling uh, to, to meet the challenge. I think Twilight would struggle with this. She wouldn't go against Chrysalis all out because deep down she doesn't want to hurt anyone. But her evil clone has no such limit. So in a weird way, this is a testament to how strong Twilight really is. Or, here's another theory. Uh, the clone is not that strong, but it's strong enough. The thing is, Chrysalis is not strong enough. She hasn't fed and her powers is very limited. Also, she did that huge spell to create the Mean Six. So, when you think about it that way, their power levels are kind of lower. If Chrysalis was stronger, she would have overtaken or overthrown Evil Twilight. Vegeta, what does the scatter say about her power level? It's ambiguous. My baby boy. <laughs> Did he just say my baby boy? Yep, there, there's, there's. Did you not see the last episode? Yes, but that's what they also said in the last episode. Exactly. We'll resurrect your baby boy. <laughs> it was that. Yeah, you better. That's not a word. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> Oh, Sweetie was going to get her money. <laughs> I know, I know, Sweetie. I, bo- I went too far. I'm sorry. It's good. It's I know, Sweetie bought. Sweetie, Sweetie bought. I, I was trying. That, but... I was trying. It's good. It's good. I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all I'm good. Sorry. It's all good. It's all good. But anyway, well, Sweetie bought. I feel bad now. <laughs> well, Sweetie bought. I, I, I cup. went too far. I I went too far. I'm sorry, Silver. I just, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Well, even so, we know Sweetie Bot is going to cover up your boo-boo, but still, you'll have to put a coin in the swear jar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I have a swear jar? Yep. You better swear by it. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho... No, because then you'll make me add more money that I don't have. You can always use bitcoins. <laughs> I don't have those either. I'm poor. I'm broke. Give me money. <laughs> Oh, boy. So, anywho. Um, yeah, so after uh, Chrysalis' plan for revenge fail, the main six, plus Glim Glam, 
arrive at the campsite and oh my god, campsite's destroyed. This is the worst day ever. And Pinkie Pie just laughs and says that this is the worst day ever. And yeah, with whatever's going on, like yeah, this day, the way that this day and is kind of poetic. And Glim Glam just says, you know what, let us happy campers set the camp up. It's not going to be that bad. Like, the seven of us, we can do this. Yay. And off Chrysalis flies, like, I get you, my ponies! <laughs> and your little dragon, too! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And with that, episode ends. A bit of a rush on for this one, and it, it's quite linear. And, yeah, you know what, let's go to the uh, discussion and final thoughts. So, Silver, what do you think of this episode, man? Well, it's much like you say, there's a lot of there's a lot of watching the two parties interact, mistake one another, but after a while you're just like, is anyone gonna stop and compare notes? Usually at some point somebody says, Hey, something weird is going on here. I'm sensing a pattern. There is no pattern identification for the ponies here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And at least somebody say something about how strange this is. Like Make a reference to season two, like the most obvious one, Rainbow Dash and Applejack says, Applejack, don't you think Rarity is a bit strange? Like something's wrong with her? And did they did mention that, right? Like something to do with Poison Joke? Yeah, I think yeah. so. So, yeah, I mean, at least there's an excuse there, so that's good. But what about Rarity and Glim Glam here with Discorded Applejack? Like, at least they could have noticed, like, hey, why is Applejack's cutie mark? a green apple, and why is she lying a lot? Like, that's strange. I don't think they even realized she was lying. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. I mean, why didn't point that out? It would be interesting if Rarity would kind of question Applejack in terms of Applejack. Um, How's the farm? How's Apple Bloom? Is she feeling well after her accident? And Applejack lies or something like that and just tells a fib. And from that point on, Rarity says, oh, okay, and whispers to Glim Glam, something wrong, she's not Applejack and something like, I mean, at least that will work, right? That's an idea, it's a good one. Although I guess the whole point of this is that, the whole point of this episode is that friends don't need to win an argument. This is an episode that tests the boundaries of what the audience will accept. Here's an odd analogy. When you talk about Applejack, she has a green cutie mark. Mm -hmm. I'm flashing back to the 80s and the original Transformers cartoon, where all the humans were like, oh, a car that drives itself, it must be an Autobot. (laughs) And there's this glaring Decepticon signal on the hood. It's like, (laughs) right there. And it happens so often. You're just like, look, all you got to do is inspect the car surface for an insignia. Oh, it's purple and pointy? Okay, it's a bad guy. (laughs) What's that? Applejack's cutie mark is green? It's a bad guy! You know, Silver, um, (laughs) somehow that Transformer analogy made me think about the Bay movie and how the government uh, does not discriminate. Like, everything is evil. (laughs) I don't know about that. I'm sure there'd be one member of the government be like, I love Megatron. He's a fantastic (laughs) golfer. I love his foreign policy. (laughs) 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 <laughs> oh, but how I wish to see an Autobot uh, Megatron. That that storyline is awesome. Oh, the Lost Light? Yeah, yeah. Dramatic irony can add tension to a scene, but if it's piled on too much, suddenly we're so in the know, it seems blindingly obvious to the characters in the story who may not be as aware. Uh, let's be, if, if your friend was having an off day, would you immediately suspect he's a clone? <laughs> No, I mean, okay, here's the thing. Uh, in our real life, probably not because cloning or the idea of cloning is kind of far off. So no, and we'll probably ask because we are friends and whatnot. But nah, we, we won't jump into conclusions and say, that's a clone, kill it. <laughs> well, here's the thing. In My Little Pony, despite the abundance of magic, it's pretty rare that the ponies actually clone themselves. There's been the mirror pool, which was Pinky going wild. Yep, yep. There's still a spell where you can be two places at once. Starlight, she did that? Yeah, she has a spell, combine two spells, and you can actually be in two places at once, get twice as much done. Oh, oh I don't remember that one. Uh, it was in every little thing she does. It briefly mentioned. Oh, yeah, that one. But other than that, I'm trying to think if there were any other copies in this series. Uh. I don't think so. So... 
even in the world of magic and ponies, there is um, clones are not the immediate answer. So I can understand they wouldn't jump to that conclusion right away. Even though we, the audience at this point, are like, it's a clone! You ponies are stupid! Stop yeah. being stupid! Yeah. It's a bad guy! Yeah, I, I, I think... <laughs> Uh, I, I think this uh, episode faces this problem where the audience knows too much while the main character knows almost nothing. And that frustrates us. It's like watching a horror movie. True. True that. Oh, don't you go into that room. You're going to die. You're going to die because it's a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. See? <laughs> and also, and I... Sofer gets it. <laughs> and on top of that, uh, to me, this feels like more of a setup episode where... We're going to get the payoff later down the line. And in all honesty, we didn't. <laughs> well, you never know. Maybe one day they'll go back and ask, what What are these multicolored planks? And the Tree of Harmony's magic Twilight avatar appears and says, oh, yeah, that day you all thought you were being jerks to one another? Yeah, clones. Oh. What? Followed quickly by, you can do that now? Oh, let me see. If I collect my chakra, I can create shadow clone copies of myself. Ooh, yes, that'll be perfect. <laughs> Twilight no jutsu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe it. Uh, but anywho, Seppi, anything to add to this conversation? Twilight's melting face was scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So It was super scary. But not half as scary as the leaked version. Yep. Oh. That's what I meant. The leaked version is scary. Yeah, so anywho, um, for you guys... Who... Seriously, Twilight's eyes melting off is weird. Yeah, so... For you guys who got no idea what we're talking about, in the uh, leak version shown to the whatchamacallit, uh, Hasbro execs before this was sent live or whatever it is, uh, in that version, Twilight's melting face here was kind of more creepy and more scary, which is kind of okay in my books because, hey, look, scary faces, ooh. But it seems that once the official release came out, it was toned down to an acceptable level of scariness. And I can understand why, because the show was meant for kids. What was the rating for this? T YTV? G for general? Y YTV, yes. Young TV, yes. So YTV's rating for kids lower than 12 or something like that, if I remember right. So for them to see something that's creepy or spooky, yeah, that, that'll give them nightmares. Well, you know, it's for kids. Oh, no. Here we are for kids. Oh, what's that? We've been closed and lost all our money? Well, too bad. That's what you get for not one piece. <laughs> oh, no. Is that rolling onigiri a donut? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, boys. But anywho, but anywho, with that, I think the review has ended and, well... Not quite. I have one one last observation. Ah, all right. The ultimate question of, is uh, Chrysalis still a threat? Ooh, for me, my answer is yes, because with any villain, the potential of doing something evil is there. Look at... <laughs> I'm going to say this is a bit of a spoiler, folks, but look at Tyrek. He's trapped in Tartarus and he could affect the world in a bad way so yeah chrysalis here given time motivation and resource she will be a threat to the main six i think she's a threat as well but for different reasons and this is where it's some assumption but chrysalis was always a threat because she had the changeling hive behind her she kept beating the main six because the hive just simply outnumbered them and she could be Celestia uh, because she uh, of her, you know, conniving ways. Now that she is without a hive, Chrysalis is more desperate. She's more reckless. Here in this episode, she uses a magic she doesn't fully understand and can't control. Hence why the clones are turning on her. And I think she's a threat because now she's more careless. I could e easily see her unearthing or unleashing uh, a greater threat on Equestria, thinking it would grant her power, but really she'd be in just as much danger as everyone else. True, true. That would be awesome. That that would be... A, Makes sense. Uh, that would be an awesome episode to watch. By the way, I got the ass. I got the ass. Season 9 is coming. 
and we got no idea who's the villain for that one is going to be. We got no idea. Uh, so my question is... Actually, to you, we do. Really? Who? Well, there was, along with the leaks of the videos, there was also a leak of concept art and references. One of which is... Can I say this on the show? It is a spoiler. Oh, well, it's unofficial and... It seems pretty official. I don't don't think so. What was it? What was it? It was Grogar. Grogar? Who's that? Who? Oh, oh! You're you're both killing me here. You're both killing me. Well, I didn't watch the old My Little Pony. That was my brother. Well, to to keep with the trend of this episode, he's a bad guy! (laughs) He was a villain of the original G1's episode arc return of tambalon where it's the city of darkness oh so they going with that story now okay interesting just because there's grogar doesn't mean there'll be tambalon the g4 versions of these characters are very different from g1 basically the smooths in g1 was more of an eldritch horror t-rex was more the devil grogar was this dark overlord i have no idea what this new grogar will be like oh huh. but that is a villain who's on the horizon, along with the return of King Sombra. Oh, really? No. What? He's not dead? Well, apparently not. Uh, you know, so- Sombra, baby, he's very confusing. Confusing. But, anywho. He's going to mess with Ponyville now, and everyone's going to be all dark and gloomy. Even the school children. Yeah, uh, yeah because uh, Sombra hacked everything. Like, hacked the planet. That's why everybody's so pissed off. Hack the bone. <laughs> Hack the bone. <laughs> yes. Um, but my question, ignoring the quote-unquote spoilers or whatever you mes- just mentioned, Silver, uh, do you think that Christmas will be the main villain for Season 9, either as the main villain or working with the villains that you just mentioned, or will she have her own movie or working for the villain in the movie? I think she'll have a role, but her days of being the lead Antagonist and threat are kaput. That is sad. That is sad. Because Chrissy here never really got her, uh, what you might call this, comeuppance or closure. Yes. Really didn't get her closure. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to see if she will never join the light side or whatever they call it. Well, she should never reform. She's a monster, not a character. Not true, not true. The show staff have said this, and monsters... I, I destroy, therefore I am. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But anywho, uh, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's uh, review episode thingy? Well, we're going to get a little bit negative. We're going to talk about negative criticism. Oh my, that's very negative for your Silver. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And funny enough, this uh, discussion is Silver's idea. It's just something that's been percolating in my brain. And I find it very fascinating. Like... It's a very interesting topic to talk about. And yeah, I want to see where we can go with this. So yeah, that will be next week's thing to talk about. So anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me a variety of places. You can find me on YouTube under After the Fact or Silver Quill. You can find me on the Twitters, MLP Silver Quill. Same for uh, Deviant Art, where I've been posting Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight Comics. But now that we're in the hiatus, I can go, woo! But not completely, because there is a new Equestria Daily post every Wednesday by yours truly reviewing the comics or throwing up an editorial. Nice, nice, nice. Any place else, man? I think that's enough. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's going to keep you busy for a while. Oh, you ain't kidding. <laughs> so, Seppi, where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube, or anywhere else. Just look up Anime Christy, no spacing. And uh, buy me a coffee, because I'm kind of broke at the moment. Just go to Kofi, Kofi.com and just search up Anime Christy and make sure I don't starve this winter. Only you can prevent Saffy's starvation yeah do that do that and also please subscribe and rate us on itunes youtube and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch radio and also like our facebook page you can also catch us on ponylive.com links are in the show notes 
The show that you're listening to now, Review and Discussion Podcast, also available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Uh, do subscribe to get the mobile version of this episode, because as far as I understand, to listen to this episode on the go, you need to subscribe to YouTube Premium. So, if you don't want to use that, you can always use iTunes or Stitcher Radio. There's always that. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank myself, Lag, Amy, Charles, Latinite, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much for the awesome support. You guys are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Quill. And I am a Safi. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, anybody got any mean things to say? Nope. Oh, really? No. Huh. I know how to defeat Chrysalis. Oh, how? How? Just do a Rainbow Dash clone no jutsu and have them all flash their booty. <laughs> Chrysalis will oh, be for face. <laughs> Chrysalis will be overwhelmed and collapse in from joy. Yeah, booty, booty, booty. <laughs> I hate you both so much. <laughs>